Taking a quick break from the high-end devices, it's refreshing looking at a super cheap smartphone. We've seen powerful technology slide into the mid-range tier, so have similar improvements made their way to entry-level prices? The LG Phoenix 2 retails for around 70 bucks as an AT&T Go phone, and for those curious, you can pause here to get a rundown on the specs. The Phoenix returns LG to a simpler time, recalling phones like the G2, though even with a smaller screen and battery, it's still larger than the elder LG flagship. It's a nice feel in the hand, grippy back, and those fake chrome edges which were popular years ago and will likely scratch up a couple weeks after you take it out of the box. Still, we're looking at a phone with a Qualcomm 210 chipset and 1.5GB of RAM powering a 720p display. On paper, this is a nice step up from where we were in the days of Lumia 500 series phones. That said, I don't know that I've ever been so happy to see 16GB of built-in storage and the ability to add a memory card. This tier of phone used to be notorious for very meager storage options. Running Android 6.0, however, this hardware struggles to maintain a fluid frame rate. It's easy to see frame drops sliding through the UI or pulling the notification shade. Using a pattern unlock, occasionally you can swipe the pattern faster than the path can be displayed on your screen. Using the phone, it handles single tasks rather well, punching out an email, replying to a text message, sending out some tweets. Tackling the basics, the phone is nicely responsive when you give it one thing at a time to focus on. When the phone has multiple services running, however, you will encounter those situations where the keyboard can't keep up with your typing. The 8 megapixel camera is surprisingly competent in good light. And even indoor lighting situations, we can achieve functional images. The video is capped at 720p, but again, in a pinch, this is better than expected and certainly better than nothing. The display resolution is more than adequate for getting work done, though obviously this won't be an outdoor sunlight busting champ. And ditto the headphone jack. Functional, if far from satisfying. And the speaker is about the minimum we would want for ringtones alerts and playing some videos. I mean, this thing can't even play Marvel Future Fight! Nah, I'm just messing around. The Phoenix is absolutely fine for casual gaming. The weakest link here is the 2100 mAh battery. Low resolution and low power hardware helps, but this isn't a runtime champ. 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi at 190 lux, which is almost the phone's maximum brightness, drained 11% of the battery. If you're using this phone in more than short bursts, you will struggle to make it to dinner time. So let's wrap this up. How does Android perform on a $70 phone? The Phoenix is a cute little device. For someone who understands the performance limitations, it's a cheap way to cover the basics and might also serve as a decent backup phone for those times you don't want to mess up a nicer phone. We'll rate this as a poor solution for grandparents though, as there are enough little performance stutters that you probably won't want to explain to a frustrated family member. Uh, we're very happy to see better screen and camera specs start filtering into the sub $100 tier, but we're still hoping to someday see an ultra cheap Android slide through home screens as fluidly as old cheap Windows phones used to. Still, it's pretty tough to complain about what you get here for a $70 smartphone. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more reviews like these and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next review.